it's one in four kids that are in the schools, in public schools, uh, one in four kids have a problem with their visual system that is undiagnosed. Sports vision is the base of a pyramid, and that is basically are your eyes healthy and are they protected and do they function 20, 20, 20, 20. That's about it, okay? But 20, 20 just simply means I'm standing still and not moving, and it's a black letter and a white thing 20 feet away. Can I see it? Can I see it? That's it. Well, it has zero application to tennis because everything's moving to tennis, except for the court. But your relation to the court. <laughs> right. Then the next step is when we get into um, actual sports vision therapy. So then we're going, okay, we've got this eye works, this eye works. Now do they work as a team? If they don't work as a team, then we got to do therapy to get them to work as a team. And as they start working as a team, then we can go to the next, after that's done, then we can go to the next level where we can actually enhance that and get them to work as a more efficient team. And once we get through the enhancement and then we're getting into the optimization zone, then all of a sudden that visual system is working so well that we're, the player's in the zone all the time because they, seem, they would simply look like they're moving ahead, a half a step ahead, a full step ahead of their opponent and getting to where they, their opponent's placing shots and, they don't, and the opponent doesn't have any clue how to, to beat you. Basically what we're doing is giving your visual system a... a such a fine-tuning um, or, or um, optimized proficiency that it can actually um, anticipate shots before you can even think about them. So your visual system, and one thing you have to kind of keep in mind is that 20% of the nerve fibers that are in the visual system don't go to the brain centers, the motor, they go straight to the motor centers. And so what happens is that some of those motor activities are made as a reflex ahead of time. And so as we get those things processed better, you're able to actually not think the process. Anytime you look at an athlete that has to think what they're doing, they're slower. And so what we're doing is we're taking the thinking out of the process, and it's a reaction and it becomes a habit. And those habits are going to be maximized by taking the visual system and taking it to the highest level. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then also what happens is as you have a visual system at a higher level, the 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 psychology of that athlete becomes uh, stronger and they have less holes in their system and they tend to beat themselves up less because they have things that they can trust better than they've ever had in their life. Uh, taking an athlete's uh, visual system and making sure that they're actually seeing it in three dimension is the first one. Uh, and that's a ba base foundation of vision in general. A lot of people are walking around thinking they're seeing three dimensionally and only seeing two dimensionally. And when you're seeing two dimensionally, you don't have any depth of field or focus to know what's going on. So you can't judge how a tennis ball is coming towards you correctly and you can't place your racket in the right position because you don't know where things are coming from. A couple of things can happen. First off, you should be able to process the game quicker so the game actually moves slower even though the players are moving faster. So what happens is, is as you get a more refined skill set in your visual system, just like as you get more refined skill set in your tennis skills, all of a sudden you're able to play against higher level athletes and they don't seem so superior to you. You actually can get up to their level and then you then you're on par with them then all of a sudden you pass them up because your skill sets became strong enough in your visual system which is driving all your tennis skills reaction time uh, visual perception sets um, you know the decision to, to return this tennis serve as you start going up essentially comes in within about a second or two of it leaving the racket if you don't make a decision to make the right move based off that first second coming off the racket you're, you're going the wrong way. And so all of a sudden you're going this way and the ball's over there. So we can improve that process so you can get that information quicker and then when you get that information quicker you're able to make the move to be in the right spot so it looks like you're in the other player's head knowing what they're doing. As we expand your peripheral awareness you'll be able to see things coming way out from the side so you could be theoretically 
90 degrees away from your opponent uh, at this angle, paying attention to a shot that you're reaching this way and see which direction that they're heading to know which way that you can actually place the shot to be more successful at scoring. A kind of a general athlete is going to blink, get out of focus, and they're going to have to refocus it back in. As we train you to get in the higher levels, you're going to be able to blink and not move those eyes at all. When you look at all elite level athletes, their visual system is, is far superior to the general population. So they already have the skill set there. Now, there are some athletes, and if, as you start doing research on um, vision training and things like that, you'll, you'll go down a list and you go, oh, well, that, that, I know that guy, I know that guy, I know that guy, I know that gal. Um, those people were actually athletes that were kind of tweeners but had their vision system enhanced and then it became superior athletes. Or even the superior athletes who wanted to keep their edge went out and, and did vision training to take themselves to the next level so they would always be number one as opposed to being number two. We are bringing uh, professional level training down to the junior level athlete. It depends on what we're dealing with. It depends if there's a, a deficiency first, because if, if there's a deficiency in the visual system first, well, first we have to take care of that. Uh, if there's a deficiency in the visual system first, then we have to apply therapy to get rid of the deficiency. Then we can train, and training is going to get you to, to accumulate things so you can actually be uh, moved to the next level. And then all of a sudden, then we can get into um, enhancement of visual skills. And when we get into enhancement of visual skills, then things can move fairly rapidly. It's the first couple of steps to get you up that may take time. And what we typically do on athletes is, is take them, do an initial evaluation, uh, run them through an appropriate either training or therapy sessions for 10 weeks, and then reevaluate to see if those holes are gone, if they needed actual training, or excuse me, therapy. If they actually needed therapy and then all of a sudden those holes that they had in their visual system are gone, then we can go ahead and start applying therapy things to get them up to the setup to where we can actually start enhancing their visual system. In some, in some athletes, all of a sudden it will be a night and day thing. But as time goes on, uh, it should become more of a night and day thing as we get into those higher and higher levels. As we train their visual system to process sports better, the foundation to train that, if we go back to that therapy discussion, is we train them how to use their eyes better as a team. Well, guess what? When you can use your eyes better as a team, guess what? You can comprehend what you read better. And when you can comprehend what you read better, your grades go up. So as, a, as an artifact to becoming a sports vision optimized athlete, become a better reader or more knowledge of what's going on and so that you've got two things going on at the same time just by optimizing the visual system. Mm -hmm.